All right, welcome, welcome everyone, welcome. My name is Lee, um, and I am with Dove Yoga Plus. My husband and I um, have a yoga studio located in Green Tree, um, and we are honored to be a part of the Westmoreland Community um, American Museum of Arts. I think I'm saying that right. Anyway, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a 15 to 20 minute restorative yoga practice. Um, restorative yoga is great for beginners, but it's really good for all levels. So it's a gentle practice. Um, of course, we're gonna be breathing. It's all about the breath in yoga. We're gonna be breathing through every pose, every posture, and um, there is unlimited benefits to doing yoga. Okay, so I won't share them all right now, but as we go along, I'll be sharing. As long as you're breathing, you're doing it right. Okay, and then after, uh, I think towards the end, at the very end, my husband is teaching a kids yoga class. So um, definitely, if you have little ones, check that out. And again, my name is Lee. So we are going to start off in a nice forward fold, right at the front edge of your mat. If you don't have a mat, no big deal. You can just be in your living room or wherever you are, um, onto your, your carpet, your hardwood floor, whatever you have. So you're going to bring your feet apart about hip width distance, and we're just going to gently come into a forward fold, opposite hand to opposite elbow. Just allow your forehead, or I'm sorry, allow your head to be nice and heavy, and your forehead is going to be drawing towards the shins. I'm just feeling a sense of release already. So I'm going to keep talking, but stay in your forward fold. Um, so as you just gently rock side to side, maybe shaking out your head a little bit, yes and no, and just feeling a nice release all through the back side of your legs, and feeling your weight being distributed from the right side of your body to the left side of your body. And then let's take a first mindful breath here together. Take a deep breath in, go all the way up. And then go ahead and take a nice long breath out. Just letting it all go. Get a little bit deeper into this forward fold. Now draw your gaze. So that means like setting your eyes to a point. Draw your eyes set up towards your belly button. So that helps us get a little bit deeper in this forward fold. Let's take one more breath here. Breathe in, fill up, fill your lungs up completely. And then take a nice long breath out. And then gently bring your fingertips to the ground. Toe heel your feet together to touch. One vertebrae at a time. We're going to roll up to stand. Nice and slow, nice and slow. Good. Once you make your way to the top, roll your shoulders up, back, and down. And again, up and back and down. So coming to mountain pose. Feet together, bring your arms out to the sides, palms facing forward. So you're going to close your eyes here. And then just feel your body. So the crown of your head is reaching up towards the sky. So you feel that length. Shoulders stacked right over your hips. Hips over your ankles. Feel your heels into your toes. All yoga poses are based around this very pose. Mountain pose. Start to draw the pit of your lower belly in. Take a deep breath in and a long breath out. And just noticing, noticing if your shoulders come a little bit more forward, see if you can bring them back, just keeping them rolled up, back and down. Naturally, you know, we, we text, drive, cook, clean, everything is right in front of us. We live in a very forward facing time. So we're just really trying to open it up here. Feel your shoulders pressing back. Imagine someone's pressing into your palms. Let's take one more full deep breath in. 
Long breath out. Good. We're going to start to add movements with your breath. Inhale, reaching your arms up to the sky. As you exhale, palms together, right through heart center, fold forward. Halfway lift on your inhale, palms to the shins, press your shoulders back. Exhale, fold forward. We're going to do that again. Inhale, reach up to the sky, maybe do a slight back bend back this time. And then exhale, fold forward, empty, empty, empty. Halfway lift, inhale. So your shoulders are back, pull the pit of your belly in. And then exhale, fold forward. One more time, just like that. Inhale, all the way up to stand. Maybe do that slight back bend, back. Exhale, fold forward. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale to fold forward. All 10 fingertips on the mat. You're going to step your left foot back and you're going to spin your back foot flat. So that left foot is flat. And the back toes are about at 10 o'clock. So softly straightening your front leg. Let's go ahead and place your right, I'll mirror you. Let's go ahead and place your left palm on your left shin. Reach your right fingertips up to the sky. So if I am mirroring you, then your left foot should be forward. So if, it's, if it is confusing for you, we can go ahead and keep your right foot forward. I was just trying to, to guide us along together because I know you're watching on the screen. We're going to do both sides so it doesn't really matter. So right here is triangle pose. So I want you to feel the leg strength grounding down. Squeeze your air thighs. But be especially anchored down through that back leg, especially your back foot, reaching your upper fingertips up. And then let's take it over our head, taking those fingertips right up over your head. Belly pulling up and in, take an inhale. Exhale. Good. One more breath to stay right here. A long breath out. Reach your left fingertips up. Look up towards that upper thumb tip. And then exhale, gently release. You're going to take the right palm down. Reach your left fingertips up to the sky. So you're in a twist. Just looking up. On your inhale, you're going to lean thin. And then exhale, twisting and rinsing. So all twisting poses are meant to cleanse, to rinse, to detoxify. So you want to be twisting not through your hips, but through the spine. Let it be like a, even like a belly twist. Let's take three more breaths right here. Last two. Start to melt that left shoulder towards your spine. Take one more inhale. And then exhale, release the upper palm down. You're going to fold over your front leg, dropping your forehead down right towards the front shin. Coming into pyramid pose. So who we are with stress, with tension, with anxiety is not our truest form, right? So and we all have it. You know, everybody has it, everybody experiences it. When you do a practice like this, even if you're taking 15, 20 minutes, or even just five minutes a day to just check in, to breathe, to take mindful breaths, it will change everything, right? It can literally change the way that we're thinking, feeling. Um, yeah, it could change your whole day. So. Take one more breath here in your pyramid pose. Long breath out. Good. Let's gently just go over to the other foot, right over to the other side. So if I'm mirroring you, it would be your right foot. Spinning your back toes flat. We're coming into the triangle pose. So your right palm is low. Left arm reaches up to the sky. Now imagine I'm pulling on your hips back 
keeping that leg strength as you reach up. Bottom heart is lifting up towards the sky. Good. This is so good for all of our digestive organs. Just looking up, reaching up, heart opening. Take one more inhale. As you exhale, we're gonna apply, we're gonna stay here for just another three breaths, and I want you to bring your upper arm right along the side of that top ear. Rolling open. Good. Now inhale, reach up, look up, exhale, bringing the palm down, reaching your right fingertips up to the sky, coming into your twist. Still keeping long, nice long lean. Drawing your right armpit towards your heart. And that idea to press down to lift up. So you're rooting down to rise up. It's like the yogi way. Root down, rise up. Good, just twisting and cleansing right here. Let's take two more. Anchor down through the back leg. One more deep breath in. And then exhale gently, folding over that front leg. Let your forehead drop down. What have you been holding on to? What do we need to just release and let go of? What feels resistant? Just taking a moment just to notice. Even just noticing the physical sensations in the body. Breathing life into them. Let's take one more inhale. Exhale. Good. Gently walk your fingertips forward right to the front of your mat. Or if you don't have a mat, again, that's okay. Step your foot forward, both feet to the front. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold and empty. Inhale, reach up to the sky. We're going to flow through one more time like we did earlier. Exhale, fold. These are called sun salutations. Sun salutation A, to be exact, it was a half one, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, reach up to the sky. Exhale, palms to your heart. We're going to take a tree pose, inviting the sole of your right foot anywhere onto the left leg with the knee. Good. And then let's take our arms out to the sides like cactus arms. Or in Pittsburgh, goalpost arms, right? Goalpost. So you're going to start to work the back to work the front. When it feels unstable, bring steadiness to your breath. And if you fall out, you come right back up. Good. Starting to squeeze your shoulder blades. So we were talking earlier, just opening the chest center. Just light up. Light yourself up with breath. Take one more inhale. Exhale, release right to the other side. So of your left foot, invite it on to that standing limb. You may notice one side feels a little bit easier than the other. One side's always a little bit more challenging. Good, and then go ahead and look up. Light yourself up with breath. Take one more inhale. And then exhale, release. Very nice. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward, forward. Right from here, we're going to take a seat. Lie down on your back. Bring your knees into your chest and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. This is so good for your lower back. Just rocking side to side gently. Good. Coming back to center, releasing the left leg long, right knee crossed and over to the left side body, arms to a T. Look over to the right side of the room. 
arms right there. See if you can keep both of your shoulders planted on the ground. This is a nice gentle twist. With every exhale, see if you can find yourself getting a little bit deeper into it. Take one more full deep breath in. Exhale, bring it back in and squeeze and switch sides. Really long, left knee over. So if you are anything like me, I love a power yoga practice, like the burn. You know, if, it's tw if I'm taking 20 minutes to do a class, it typically is going to be the most intense class I can possibly take. I have three little ones. We, we have three little ones, um, five and under. And, and so if I want to get something in, it's a, it has to be a burn, right? But, but I will say there's always a balance of effort and ease. So these practices like this, go ahead and bring your knees back into center, are just as important as a, a super high intense physical class, right? This is just as important and just as needed for your body, for your mind. Go ahead and extend your legs up to the sky. So arms out to your sides. This is a restorative inversion. Gravity is working for you here, so it's letting all that fresh oxygenated blood will put you down into your heart, liver, lungs. It stimulates your thyroid. It's great for your brain. Um, you know, inversions are so many benefits, but inversions are great for insomnia, for, um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, there you go, lost my train of thought. If you ever feel <laughs> foggy or just need clarity, inversions are also really good for that. Good. So just taking one more moment here. And gently release. You're going to bring your legs down onto your mat. Let your feet fall open. Arms out to your sides. This is called final relaxation. This is Shavasana. So this is where I will lead you. I would recommend at least being here for five minutes. This is like the ultimate restorative pose. Just allow everything to settle into your body. You can return your breathing back to normal. And before you go on to everything else that you have to do or going on to the rest of the um, community using the words. Um, just take the time to, to be here for a few more moments, all right? Thank you once again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.
Hello, my name is Michael Carson, and I am the Studio Programs Coordinator at the Westmoreland Museum of American Art. I would like to introduce to you a program that we will be running during the next several months while we are having our community days from home. And basically, it's going to be an art experimentation where we use materials that you may find commonly in your home. Um, sometimes it might be in your kitchen. Sometimes it might be the garage or the basement. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but it's going to be a time for experimentation and creativity. So I wanted to preface these videos just by saying that it is for the purposes of experimentation and to use non-traditional art materials. So if I am using something um, that's very specific, that's not to say that you couldn't find something else that might do just as well, something in a similar mode. Uh, so I, I just wanted to make sure that you don't feel like you have to run out to the store immediately. Um, I think that the purpose of these videos is to use your creativity and look around and see what's around us and you know try things. Sometimes in art we try things and they work out and other times we try things and they don't work out so well but that's okay that's part of the process and it's part of the journey so i thank you for joining us and happy art making art made using stuff at home hello and welcome to this installment of art made using stuff at home basically you can make art with anything and today we're going to use items you may find in your kitchen, like salt. I have some salt, um, and I have some food coloring dyes. You are going to need a paintbrush and something to mix your food coloring dyes on, and some water. And I'll show you. We're going to make uh, a simple uh, salt painting. So this is a salt painting. I actually made on a very, I don't know if you can see, a very lightly colored uh, image that I found on the internet. And I just printed this on a piece of cardstock. Now I'll show you another version here. And this is something that I drew actually on a blackboard. So I'm going to show you two options today. And I'm going to show you how to do both of them. The first one is pretty easy. Let me switch my cameras here. Okay, so um, basically how this works, let's get focused. Um, basically how this works is you just use Elmer's glue. I forgot to mention the Elmer's glue, but basically you just use Elmer's glue and you draw with the glue and you pour the salt in the glue and then that creates the image. So I'm gonna draw lightly with a pencil. So if I draw lightly with a pencil, um, you can just draw with the glue freehand, um, but some people may wanna follow uh, some lines. So I'm gonna draw just a simple flower here couple of leaves. Now all you do is you just take the glue and you need a bottle of glue and you just run the glue lines over your lines. Now you would want your pencil lines to be a little bit light, not dark, because it's the white of the salt that takes the color. So uh, you can make patterns the glue patterns like this, those, and then patterns like this. So the more lines that you put on, the more salt that you would put on, and then uh, the more areas that you will have the color. In this example, we will be leaving the paper white. And again, this is just a piece of cardstock.
So whatever design you make, wherever you put the glue is where your salt is going to hit it. So what I do is I just take the salt and gently shake it on. And I'm going to cover the entire glue drawing in the salt. You want a good bit of salt on there so it really kind of gets absorbed by the glue. You take this, shake it around a little more, shake this around a little more. Now you can't eat the salt after you've had it in the glue, so you just want to dump that off in the trash. But then you're left with this design. And pretty simply how this works then is if you take some of your colors and basically you just touch this on there. And what they're going to do is they're going to bleed. The colors are going to bleed into the salt. So the more water that you have here, um, as I touch this, you'll see that it circulate together. Now, if you take another color, say I'm going to add some pink here, and take some pink and touch it here, like it could bleed into that yellow. So you have to kind of just be careful um, if you don't want the colors to run together. See, it's going to run together there a little bit. But all this is is white glue, a piece of cardstock, some salt, and then you're adding your color with the food dyes. So there you have it. And then once you're done, you just need to let this dry. It'll take, it might take even a couple days to dry depending on the temperature and the humidity where you are. But if you just touch this, touch the surface of it, it'll bleed right into that. Again, it's gonna take a while to dry, but just let it dry. And in a couple days, It'll be hard and the salt sort of sticks on there. So that's that. And then this was again the the one that I had done. Let's see if you can see if you can see that very well. But there's a there's a light drawing under there. So again, this was something that I printed that was more complex. This was something a little bit more simple. But it's quite a fun activity. Then I wanted to see. I kind of liked the colors on that, but I wanted something that had a more contrasting background. So if you're interested in sort of pursuing this a little farther, what I did was I found a black board or a black piece of cardstock. And what I did was my drawing, I did in a white acrylic paint pen. So anywhere that I'm going to put my glue and my salt, I wanted it to be white so that it will show that color more brilliantly. So you would just make a drawing and you can buy these, uh, this kind of painter's acrylic paint pen um, they're actually made by Elmer's as well. Um, you can buy them at Walmart in their little craft aisle. So wherever I put my white, that is where I'm going to put my glue and then my salt. So just a simple design like that. And I would wait for this to dry, but for the purposes of showing you this, this will dry pretty rapidly. And then you just put your blue lines. On the white lines. Now you can do this in stages. Say I wanted to do all of my green leaves first. If you make a mistake, by the way, just take your finger or you can take a brush or something really uh, toothpick and wipe some of that glue up. Um, but 
I'll just show you quickly here. Put the salt on. Again, shake it around. Pump it off. And then what you're left with is the white underneath of the salt. So when you go to put your colors on, then those colors are going to remain brilliant over top of the white pen. So what I did with this example was then when I was done, when it was all dry, I took a clear coat. You can see I put some uh, glitter into it with a clear coat over top. Apologize for the delay in focus. There you go. Um, but you can, you can kind of see that, that, that there's a clear over top of it which really kind of like cements that salt in there. Um, but that's not, that's not necessary. That's just an, an additional step. Um, so wherever I have the salt in the blue, I just touch it. And this is probably going to bleed together. And that's how you do it. So pretty simple and all stuff found at home, found in your kitchen. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of Art from Your Kitchen. Made stuff, made the stuff from your home. So we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye bye.